What's going on my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today we're going to be working on a 2013 Volkswagen Golf TDI Mark VI. Today on the Mark VI behind me, we're going to be covering how to install this intercooler repair kit. Uh, it's a cold climate repair kit per Volkswagen on the TDI behind me. It's going to be applicable to your 2009 to 2014 models. And the main issue here being, again, a short version of this, is that over time moisture can build up in the system. And during the winter months, uh, that moisture can cause a blockage in the intake system, or even worse, it can cause your engine to hydro lock, at which case you can risk ruining your motor. So you oftentimes see people draining the intercooler lines on these vehicles. Uh, in extreme cases of pulling the globe plugs and turning the engine over. This kit's designed to eradicate all that. It includes a new intercooler as well as a couple breather lines, vacuum lines, a new sensor, and a new elbow. The only thing that we have added to this kit is some coolant because we may be removing the radiator. This is usually sandwiched between the radiator and the AC condenser. Some of you may be able to weasel your way around that and simply just separate the three units, but we're going to try to cover both ways and see which one is either easier or more accessible or the better way to do the DIY. But before we get started on this job, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna need for this DIY. For this job, you're gonna need a torque wrench that can handle 60 Newton meters all the way to 120 Newton meters. And we have a couple different ratchets. You could probably get away with just a quarter inch, but we have both a quarter inch and a 3 8 drive, as well as a couple extensions. We're using a CTA flexible driver. This is a seven mil driver. You can use a regular flathead screwdriver instead. That'll be used for the clamps. A uh, small pick helps with removing some of the boots and some of the electrical connectors that we're going to encounter. Bungee cords are highly recommended. Um, scissors we're going to be using to cut some vacuum lines. You can get a better tool for that, I'm sure. As far as sockets go, we have a 17 mil for the lug bolts. We have a 16 mil, a 10 mil, a T30, T25, and a T20. And then some nice to haves are electric tools to remove some of the hardware a little bit quicker. Some brake clean to clean up some of the parts. And then depending on how you're going to approach this job, I recommend you have a floor jack and maybe a piece of wood uh, if you're going to be working on the ground to help balance the uh, whole core support when you're taking it out. Uh, an alternative here is if you're going to be draining the coolant and putting the car into service mode, which is extending the front clip out a bit on those 16 millimeter bolts, and you're going to want to use uh, something to fill the system back up as well as a catch pan to catch coolant. We have a catch pan off to the side that we're going to use in case there's any water in our system. Um, for the car's sake, hopefully there's none. For the video's sake, hopefully we'll run into a little bit of water. But with that, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, we are under the Mark VI. Our first step here is going to be to remove the splash shield, as well as any other hardware holding our front bumper cover on from underneath. So we have about seven T25s holding on the splash shield and three T30s along the back. Then we have about another six or so, don't quote me to this, uh, T25s along the bottom trim of the bumper. Of course, not counting the hardware in the fender liner. So we'll start with our three T30s in the back. And just be mindful as you drop the shield, there could be debris, oil, fluids, anything in the shield. So if you're working on the ground, you want to avoid that from dropping on your face. All right, now we can switch over to the T25 bit and get the rest of our hardware out. And we'll set the splash shield to the side. All right, now that we have our shield off, we have a better view of where we're going to be working. We have our intercooler lines. Uh, we have the bottom portion of our fan shroud, which we are going to be removing a couple electrical connectors. But first things first, we're going to do what we came to do here first, which was remove these intercooler lines. If we're lucky for the video's sake, there'll be some water in them. But for the car's sake, hopefully they're dry. So let's get our catch pan situated and we'll start by removing those next. Good people, we pulled off an additional eight T25s. These are just going to make our life a little bit easier when we go to pull off the bumper cover. Now with that, we can go ahead and tackle uh, draining or removing the charge pipes uh, or the lines going to the intercooler. So we start by removing the passenger side first. We'll set up our catch pan to catch any potential fluid. And then we'll remove the hose clamp, pull that boot out. We'll switch over to the driver's side. And then we'll tackle anything else that we can remove while we're down here to make our lives a little bit easier once we head back up top in the engine bay. I'm going to start by undoing it from the charge pipe using a 7mm uh, CTA 
screwdriver, but you can use a regular flathead screwdriver as well. We'll just loosen up the clamp and then work on separating the boot from the pipe. This might make it a little bit easier too when you go to remove the um, intercooler side. Give it a little twist. All right, no problem. A little bit of sludge in there. You want to make sure you clean that up before you reassemble your car, but no water is good for this car at least. Now this car has had that issue happen to it about four times already. Um, so this is definitely an upgrade we want to do and a repair we want to do on this vehicle. So if you're experiencing that, you know what to do, my good people. With that undone, now we're going to remove this clip from the intercooler side. You can use a flathead screwdriver, you can use pliers, whatever you have accessible to you. Just pull it down. If you've worked on BMWs, this is similar to the clips you'll find on the cooling system on BMWs. And if you'd like, you can remove the clip in full all the way. Don't listen to me about removing the clip in full. It's held in here still, which it's kind of nice. You don't risk uh, losing it, but there's a lot of grime and crud in here, which we're going to clean out uh, before we reassemble everything later. So with that, now let's hop over to the driver's side and do the same thing. While we're under here, my good people, to continue helping ourselves in this DIY, we're going to work on removing the electrical connector to our fan so that we can get to some hardware behind it. Uh, the fan is held in by four T30. So first electrical connector, you have a red tab that you pull back. Then you can press on it and disconnect the connector. There we go. Set that to the side, tuck it over by the horn. And now with that, we have exposed one of the T30s that holds this fan on. So while we're here, let's just go ahead and take that out next. I have a T30 on my quarter inch ratchet. And with this one out, we might as well go ahead and hop over to the passenger side and remove that T30 as well. The other T30 is located between this coolant line and AC line on the passenger side. You can just squeeze the tool in between the two lines here and get your T30 in. It's a little bit of a tight fit with the AC compressor. Uh, depending on what size uh, T30 you have and ratchet. Once you get it on there, you should be able to break it free and get it out. All right, and now that we have the bottom of our fan freed, we can go ahead and situate one more thing for us uh, before we head back up top, which is gonna be our intake pipe. We're gonna go ahead and free that up from the block so that it has some wiggle and separate this coolant line from the pipe as well so that when we get ready to pull it out, um, it's not fighting us. We don't have to do it now, but we're already down here, so we might as well tackle it now. So let's do that next. We have a couple T30s that hold our intake pipe up against the block. Uh, first one is gonna be located underneath the belt here. We're just gonna squeeze our T30 uh, kind of above the belt. Get that in there. And again, you don't have to do this now, but we're down here already. We might as well make our lives a little bit easier um, for down the road. All right, that's captured. That's gonna stay with our pipe. And that'll allow us to freely remove that. Uh, following the pipe, we have a coolant line that is attached to the pipe via a clip. We're just gonna go ahead and break that clip open. That coolant line isn't holding us down later on. We're just gonna use a flathead screwdriver to pop this clip open. Again, this is what's holding the coolant line up against our intake pipe. This can be a little bit tricky sometimes. They're just kind of like an alligator clip. I'll open that up and give that room to wiggle. And now the fun one's gonna be uh, inside of these coolant line and AC line, there's one more T30 hiding up in there. So we'll grab our ratchet with an extension and get to that one next. All right, my good people, we are under the hood of the Mark VI. We're gonna get to a couple things first so that we can get our fan out. Um, one, while we're up here, is just gonna pull the beauty cover off, the insulating cover. If you don't have that, you can skip this part, but these simply just pull up. We have a couple rubber grommets underneath that attach to a couple nubs on the top of the engine. We're gonna go ahead and set this over to the side. And then in order to give ourselves some room to get the fan out, we have this um, duct that goes into our air box that we're gonna remove. There's an elbow near the intake pipe that you can just pull off. There we go. Set this to the side as well. And with that elbow off, now we can grab our T25. We have uh, two T25 screws holding in this ducting up against our radiator support. And then we have one more on the other side. 
Then we can pull this piece out and set it to the side. With that ducting out of the way, now we can get to our T30 up on the driver's side beneath the coolant hose. Small extension on the quarter inch ratchet will do the trick. Now we have one more on the passenger side. And now that we have all four T30s removed, we can pull out our fan shroud assembly. You get it basically at a 90 degree angle and you can pull it out nice and easy, no problem. Go ahead and set it to the side. All right, my good people. Now, before we continue on, regardless of whether we decide to drop the radiator in full or not and drain the system, we are still gonna have to separate it from the intercooler. So while we're up here, let's just go ahead and tackle the two T30s top side that hold the radiator to the intercooler. Um, just as a recap, at this point, the system is still full. It's closed, we never opened it. Um, like I said, we're gonna try to get as far as we can without draining the system. If we can save you a little bit of time and money um, by not pulling out the radiator, then we'll try that. And if not, we'll pull the whole thing out if we need to, no problem. Uh, but for now, we have two T30s top side that we're gonna get to. Then we'll hop underneath and get the two T30s down below. So let's get to it. Now let's hop over to the passenger side and do the same. And with the top down, let's hop underneath and get the bottom two T30s. On the passenger side, we have a T30 uh, kind of behind the coolant and AC line, just right to where the original uh, T30 holding the fan shroud was. Just mindful by doing that, the radiator is going to be loose now. And now let's hop over to the driver's side and do the last one. Now that we have this last T30 out, our radiator is loose. Our next step is going to be to work on removing the front bumper cover. We're going to start in the fender liners. You do not have to remove the wheel to get to the hardware. However, it makes life easier. Um, we're on the, up in the air today, so we're going to take the wheels off just to give you a better view of the hardware. And then we'll work on removing the rest of the screws holding the bumper cover on. To continue on with the bumper removal on our Mark 6, we have a couple pieces of hardware inside of the wheel well to separate the liner from the front bumper cover. You do not have to remove the wheel for this. However, we're going to take them off today to give you a better view of where we're working. And Personally, it takes two minutes to take the wheels off. It gives us a little bit of better working space. Uh, for those of you that are following along, you're gonna wanna remove your beauty caps first if you still have them. Usually there's a special tool with your vehicle. It's a little hook to pull them out. If you don't have that, you can use something like your right angle pick to get them all out. And just set them to the side. And if your car is still equipped with them, don't forget to grab your wheel lock so you can get your lock off. Then we have five 17 millimeter lug bolts to remove. If you don't have an impact gun, make sure you break the lug bolts free with your breaker bar while the car is on the ground. Then you can raise it up and remove them the rest of the way. And now we have our wheel off. We have better access to the five T25s we're gonna remove. So let's go ahead and do that next. I'm just gonna use an electric impact tool to zap out the T25s. And it never hurts to just pull this, make sure it's nice and loose. And now with that, my good people, we're simply gonna hop over to the passenger side, repeat the exact same steps, and then we'll meet back by the grill area to continue the last bit of the hardware removal. We have both fender liners unattached. At this point, if you'd like to make your life a little bit easier, especially if you're working alone, you can go ahead and just fold in the fender liners a bit. And if you have any access to them, you can go ahead and disconnect your side marker lights. And if your vehicle is equipped with it, you can disconnect your fog lights as well. Or you can wait until you pull the bumper out a little bit and then disconnect them before fully pull it off. So up to you if you have the room to work with. I know the windshield washer reservoir is often in the way on the passenger side. And if you have uh, headlight washers as well, you're gonna get some pliers to clamp the lines off before you disconnect them so you don't drain out your system. But with that, let's go ahead and move on to the next step of getting this bumper cover off. Up top, we have four T25s that hold our grill in, as well as a couple tabs underneath. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those now. With the four T25 removed, well then we have a couple clips at the bottom of the grill that hold the grill to the bumper. Uh, usually you wanna grab one half at a time, and depending on how many times your grill has been off, it may be a little bit harder for you the first time than it is for someone that's taken it off a bunch of times. Uh, the goal is to grab one side at a time and kind of reaching underneath the bottom fin, just supporting the grill 
you're gonna wanna give it a nice uh, pull towards you, nice and straight, something like that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. There we go. So it's got six tabs that feed into the bumper here. It's a pretty tight fit, so it should be a little bit hard to get off. Pretty straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and set this to the side. We have two more T25s, one on either corner of the bumper up top here. We're gonna go ahead and zap those out. And now we should be able to pop the bumper cover off either side, simply pulling away from the fender like that. Do the same thing on the other side. And then we can start pulling the bumper cover forward. And if you haven't already, don't forget to disconnect your fog lights, uh, your side marker lights, whatever your vehicle is equipped with. It has windshield washer nozzles for the headlights. Uh, would not be windshield washer nozzles, it'd be headlight washer nozzles. Go ahead and disconnect those two. And with our bumper cover off, we can go ahead and pull off this foam bumper as well. And go ahead and set this to the side. To continue this uh, wonderful removal process, we're gonna work on removing our headlights next. We're gonna start by disconnecting them uh, by the electrical connectors and then a bunch of T30s to pull them out. Depending on what your vehicle is equipped with, you may have halogen, you may have xenons or adaptive. Uh, just be sure you disconnect them. And then from there, we can go ahead and pull them out. That's gonna give us access to be able to remove this front clip out and unbolt the AC condenser from the intercooler. We have an electrical connector here, pretty much similar to uh, any standard Audi uh, Volkswagen connector that are a pain in the butt. Sometimes it's easier to push the tab and push the connector in and then pull out. And we'll start with this lower T30 first. We have two up top here. We have one in the front lower corner. And we're using a T30, you can also use a 10 mil for these lower ones. We have one more at the front here. We have one more right up here. This is more like an adjustment one, so as long as you don't turn the inside piece here, this should go back on the same way it came out. And just remember, this one's a little bit longer than the rest of the hardware. That's gonna go with the adjustment screw. And then we have one more up top of here. And now, finally, we should be able to pull this headlight out. All right, my good people, and good rule of trick is just keep all the hardware with the headlight that you pulled out. You can also pull this bracket off. Um, to be quite honest, I'm not sure if this had to come out, but we had it out anyways, as this whole front clip is gonna be moving. So we'll keep everything together, set it to the side. Let's just copy the same steps on the passenger side now. So something we're running into on the passenger side headlight, which you may experience as well that we didn't run into on the driver's side, is this front bracket here is still keeping our headlight in place. We were able to weasel it out of place on the driver's side, um, but for some reason it's not letting us take it out on the passenger side. So no problem, this is gonna have to come off anyways. It's held in by three T25s. And then up front, there's a little notch for you to stick your finger in. And there's a small tab that you press to release the whole assembly out. So let's grab our T25, we'll zap these three out. We'll press our tab in over here and then we should be able to get this bracket out and get our headlight out as well. Small screwdriver or your finger, which I want fits better. Press in on there to unlock this clip here. Let's pull this forward. There you go. And then the whole headlight will come out. And so with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to the side with all the hardware that came off, and then we'll continue on and getting one step closer to this intercooler. Next on our laundry list, we have an ambient air temperature sensor to disconnect um, as this crash bar is gonna be coming off. You can either choose to disconnect it from the connector or just push the tabs in and push the sensor all the way out, whichever way you wanna go about it. Uh, it. Might be a little bit easier to just do the, collect the connector for you. In our case, the whole thing came out. Just pop the cable out of the metal tab and we can kinda of let it hang out to the side right now. We can pull it off and tuck it down. So now that we have that off, we have six T30s to remove. We have two up front here. And now we're gonna go ahead and remove the four 16 millimeter bolts that hold our front crash bar to our frame rails. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to support the center stack with either a floor jack 
or screw jack, depending on where you're working. Uh, arguably, if you're doing this job on the floor, a floor jack is going to be a lot easier to work with. So we can keep a good level here and a good filming level. We're just using our shop cart to support this whole stack in the middle. So now we can go ahead and pull off the four 16 millimeter bolts and pull this front crash bar off. There's going to be some residual markings on this crash bar support. You're going to be able to match up with your hardware when you reinstall everything as it is going to sit a little bit higher. If you can also use a Sharpie marker to mark them now so you don't lose the spot. All right, my good people, now that we have the front crash bar off, we have a better view of our AC condenser, which is bolted to the intercooler, so we're going to want to separate those two as well. So let's get set up for that next, and we'll work on getting that step situated. Good people, continuing on, before we pull off this core support, we have a few more things to remove. Um, at this point, if you haven't already, make sure your negative terminal is disconnected on your battery. You can disconnect both terminals if you'd like. Uh, the next thing we have here to remove are a couple sensors, two of them being impact sensors. You don't want to trigger any ABS, or you don't want to trigger any airbag lights, or worse, trigger airbags by accident. So with that, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the two impact sensors. Then we'll move on to the hood release cable and then we'll get ready to pull this bad boy off. The impact sensors are usually located on either side of the radiator. It's your choice if you want to remove the Torx bolt that holds it on or simply disconnect the connector. We're gonna go for the connector. There's a little yellow connector here with a red locking tab. We're just gonna unlock the tab first. Sorry, I'm gonna stick my head in here for one moment. And then once that is unlocked, we push down on the tab and just pull back like a normal connector. Now we can go ahead and repeat the same steps on the driver's side. Over on the driver's side, we have one more connector to the left of the upper radiator hose, as well as this one more black connector right above the radiator hose. So you wanna make sure you tackle both of those. And then while we're on the driver's side, let's focus on the hood latch release cable and separate that from the half going into the car. To separate the hood release cable from the whole core here, there's two plastic tabs that hold the joint on the radiator support. Just pop those down and we can work at it from underneath. And using a small flathead screwdriver, we're just gonna separate this cap. And this is similar to something you would find on like your bicycle. It's just two cables. We're gonna pull them out. You can pull them out of both ends if you'd like. Then we're just gonna unlock the ball and that'll split the two. And that'll allow us to pull this whole assembly off. And with that, we have a couple T30s, one on either fender and one on either side of the front of the core. And then we can pull this whole core off. We have two T30s up front still to remove. It's gonna separate the whole uh, stack, if you will, the sandwich from the core. We have one more on the other side. And then we have two T30s up by the fender. It's up to you if you choose to remove it from the fender or the inner core. I think it's a little bit easier to line everything up if you do it by up here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these. One more on the passenger side. And now at this point, our whole radiator core support should be free. Uh, we still have our cart here that's gonna hold the stack, if you will, uh, once this is pulled off so that nothing's dangling. We're not putting any weird pressure on our AC lines. So we're just gonna kind of separate the two. And we can go ahead and set this bad boy to the side. And with that, my good people, we finally have eyes on our intercooler. Uh, this is a great opportunity to not only inspect your AC condenser and your radiator, if you can and you have the time, you can clean out the fins, blow them out with a power washer if you're working outdoors, or use some shop air or a leaf blower, anything to kind of help uh, the longevity of your components here. So off camera, we'll vacuum out the fins, we'll hit them with some compressed air. But for now, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we can pull off these rubber isolators on either side of the intercooler. We're gonna transfer these over to our new unit. They simply pull off to the side and we'll keep them on their respective sides. And then from there, we have five T30s that attach the AC condenser to the intercooler. We have two on either side and then we have one more on the passenger side on that aluminum bracket. So let's zap those off and then we can get this old intercooler out and then continue on with this DIY. All 
Here's our old unit. So you can see it's visibly different from the new piece. It's got two plastic end tanks. The new revised unit has an aluminum side with a block of valve. So definitely a revised piece. We're gonna go ahead and set this to the side. And then before we continue on with installing the new one, we're gonna take advantage of the room that we have to work with right now. And we'll work on removing our intake pipe so we can do our new elbow and get that situated with our new map sensor and all that good stuff. So next, we're gonna take advantage of the room we have to work with. And those of you that drained your coolant, you're gonna have the radiator out of your way at this point, so you'll have even more room to work with. Uh, we're gonna undo the intake pipe as this elbow is gonna be replaced with the new one that has our new temperature switch in it. I'm just gonna undo the clamps. Again, I'm using a seven millimeter driver. Uh, you can use a regular flathead screwdriver for these. I'm also gonna undo the bottom clamp as well as this boot is gonna come off anyways. Um, it may make life a little bit easier if we get the boot off now versus taking the whole pipe out all as once. And you'll note that the map sensor is right to the left of where we're working right now. The sensor is a little bit hard to get to with the AC line being right there. So we may have to pull the pipe down a bit and then we can disconnect our map sensor. Um, but if you have room or maybe a nice pick to work with, you can work at disconnecting it now if you'd like. But there should be some slack in that line or in that harness to get that off a little bit down below. And now we're just gonna work this pipe off. All right, I'm gonna take advantage of the angle I have here and try to separate this elbow from the rest of our pipe. I'm just gonna use a small pick to break the seal loose. I'm not too worried about piercing this boot as we're not gonna be reusing it, but that seal is tight. There we go. That's going to make removal of this pipe a lot easier as well. So now we can get underneath. We can start moving this pipe around. Um, you may have better access to the map sensor now, or you can choose to pull it down a bit. I'm going to see if I can disconnect it from here while we have the, the room. There we go. And now we'll just crawl underneath and pull this pipe out the rest of the way. Again, we already undid the two T30s prior that hold it on. If you haven't done that, you're gonna to wanna to do that now. I was gonna work uh, the rest of our charge pipe down. It's ready to self-remove itself. Here we go. Here's our map sensor we're gonna be replacing. So let's just take this over to the tool cart. Um, for those of you that want a better view, here's one of the T30s. This sits right behind the AC compressor. And here's the exterior one, which we removed first uh, in front uh, underneath the AC compressor. So we'll swap this out and then we'll feed it right back in. We're gonna use a T20 to get this old hardware out. Well, we'll be reusing this hardware. There we go. And then now is a great time to go ahead and clean up the pipe a bit. Use some brake cleaner if you have it or shove a couple rags through it. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of both clean it up nicely, and then we'll install our new sensor. All right, with our pipe nice and cleaned up now, we can install our new map sensor. Again, we're gonna install it the same way that the old one came out, with the connector facing up towards the throttle body. If you need to, you can lubricate the O-ring a bit. It's gonna get a little bit of brake clean on my finger. Lubricate the O-ring with that, it'll dry will act as a quick lube. There we go. We'll get our two T20s started by hand, and we're just gonna snug them up. They're just going into plastic. They don't need to be super tight. They just need to hold the sensor down, and we're good to rock and roll. There's two. And with both of these situated, we might as well just go ahead and feed it right back up into our block. So let's do that now. Now right, we're gonna go ahead and feed our pipe back up. And for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and hand start the T30 up front on our oil pan here. Uh, that's the only one I'm gonna do for this moment until we get the boot situated up top and our map sensor connected, just so that we have a little bit of wiggle room to adjust things as we install them. But I also don't want the pipe to fall uh, while I'm trying to put the elbow on it. So just a couple threads is all we need. We may have to undo it to move things around, but that'll keep this from falling down. And with that guy situated in there nice and loosely, let's head back up top. We'll install our new elbow that has a new built-in temp switch into it, and then we'll pick it up from there. Back up top, we're gonna plug in our new sensor. Have that situated now. There we go. Now we're gonna work on feeding our new elbow in with our temperature switch built in. 
Uh, this can be a little bit of a tight fit. It is a new piece and it's a little bit Frankenstein uh, from Volkswagen, but that's what is gonna fix this. And at this point, my good people, just wanna make sure that the elbow is situated evenly on both the throttle body, the flap side of things, and your pipe down below. Once you're happy with the fitment on both of those, take your flathead screwdriver or your seven millimeter driver and just snug them both down. We have the top of our elbow situated where we want it. It's up against the ridge on the throttle body. The pipe itself down below also has a flat stop on it where the elbow should bottom out. So once that is situated too, go ahead and tighten down your clamp there as well. Now that we have our elbow installed, this is a great time to go ahead and deep dive into the uh, T30 that holds the rest of that charge pipe up against the block. That's gonna situate itself behind the AC lines uh, below the map sensor. So you might as well grab your T30 now, take advantage of the room that you have to work with and tighten that one down. All right, my good people, at this point we have our intake tube situated with our new temp sensor installed. Uh, we snugged up the two T30s that hold the pipe into place as we're not gonna really be moving it around anymore. So our next step here is gonna be to feed our new intercooler in. Right now I have a bungee cord supporting both the AC condenser and the radiator. Again, we're doing this without draining the coolant. Should you not have the radiator in place, maybe be a little bit easier for you to work with, maybe not. Um, but regardless, I'm gonna keep the bungee on just the radiator portion of things and then we'll be mindful of holding the AC condenser with our hand while we feed the intercooler in. And then we'll, slid, we'll slide our cart back underneath to kind of support this whole stack. Um, if you're working at home on the ground, maybe a jack stand or a box, an apple box, something of that sort will help kind of keep everything from hanging. You don't want to put any weird stress on your AC lines. You don't want to bind up the radiator lines either. All right, now everything can kind of sit a little bit uh, better here. We can snug everything up. One thing to note, the kit does include four new T25s. These are gonna be used on the aluminum side of things as it is a different fitting. It's no longer going into plastic. So just make sure you have your four T25s ready. Two are gonna go from the front, from AC condenser to the intercooler, and then two are gonna go from the radiator to the intercooler. So. For now, we're just kind of going to snug everything up and you're going to see us start sandwiching them together and we'll pick it up from there. So again, we have three T30s on the passenger side of things. We're using the original hardware that we took off. We're just snugging this up as they are just going into plastic. Now we can switch over to T25s for the driver's side, the aluminum side of things. And while we have this all apart, my good people, if you choose to, now is a great time to join the radiator back up with this sandwich. Again, that was four T30s. So we're gonna go ahead and take that opportunity now while we have a little bit of room to work with, maybe even just the top ones. Uh, really, you'll be able to get to them at any point before you install the fan. Now this bomb one's gonna be a little bit tight to see. Um, we could always save it for later on once it's back in the uh, core support, which I think we're gonna do because right now it's a little bit tight to get to. We'll save this last one uh, once we have everything kind of back in the car. So with that, that's gonna be our next step. We're gonna kind of prop everything up. If anything, we'll get a second set of hands or a bungee cord. We'll slip our core support on and then we'll line everything up nicely. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install our rubber isolators once more before we put the core on. They only go on one way, they are keyed a specific way. Remember we kept our right one, or driver's side one on the car on this side, kept the other one on the other side. Makes life a little bit easier when you're taking apart a big puzzle like this Golf is. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our core support back into our sandwich here, triple decker, a little bit of turkey, BLT, lots of mayo. Uh, we have two rubber grommets at the bottom that we need to pay attention to. These are the grommets for the intercooler, uh, the two silver feet at the bottom that you may have seen that are going to key in here and kind of line everything up for us. I still have a bungee cord on the driver's side of things just to kind of help support that end. Um, so really it's going to be me lifting this up, 
feeding this upwards and then lining up those two bottom feet. It's gonna be a little bit of a song and dance, but lucky for you, I love music and I love to dance. I'm gonna reach my hand from in between the core support here. Lift it up, look for those silver feet. Here's a better view of those feet lining up with the rubber grommets on the core support. I'm gonna make sure they both go in on each end and that's how you know everything's lined up. While you're doing this, be mindful of the top of your core support. You don't want to hit your radi or you don't want to hit your fenders. If you need to, put a little bit of painter's tape around your work area if you're a little bit concerned with that. Never hurts. This car's uh, paint's a little bit worse for wear, so I'm not too concerned about it. Sorry, Pat. I know what I'm doing is I'm just threading a T30 back into the top of the fenders here, just to kind of help hold this whole thing for me on one side, so I can mess with the lining up this sandwich. There we go. That's what we want. Both of the feet are nice and sunken in. And if you look at the two forward bolts, these were the second to last, these were the first of the last four T30s we pulled. Those go into the rubber isolators that go on the side of the intercooler and kind of keep the sandwich attached to this core. So we'll put those T30s in and then we can work on snugging these up based on the old markings on the top of the core support. So what I'm doing here is I'm reaching from behind and I'm just pushing the whole stack forward. That'll allow me to get this one started by hand. And these T30s we're just gonna snug in by hand. Once it's nice and snug, that's all you need. We'll do the same thing on the driver's side. Beautiful. And with those situated, we can come back up top here and snug up our T30s. Uh, there should be markings if you didn't use a Sharpie uh, that you can follow from the bolts uh, when they used to be in here. I'll lift this up a bit so you can see. We have a nice ring around the bolt. I'm just gonna match that up with the hardware and that'll give me the position of what it used to be like originally. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Same thing here, you can see uh, the old markings from the washer. We're just gonna get it as close to as what it was before. If you need to, you can lift everything up and move it around. And with that, we have the front and top of the core uh, back on the car. The next step here is gonna be to put our crash beam back on. I still have the cart supporting everything. There's still a lot of weight on here. You don't wanna leave it to just these two little wings. Once we get the crash support back in, then we can reattach our sensors and our hood cable, all that good stuff. But for now, I just wanna alleviate the stress out of here. So we'll grab the crash support, we'll set it on. How many times can I say crash support, my good people? Not enough. We'll get the support over and we're gonna use the car and the combination of the lift to line up the bolt holes for the four 16 millimeter bolts on either side. Same thing, kind of matching the markings of where they used to sit, because there's a little bit of adjustment up and down on this, and then we'll pick it up from there. So let's do that now. We're gonna get this bad boy situated. And we're just gonna start with one 16 millimeter bolt on each side to hold it up, and then we'll go from there. You wanna make sure that this um, connecting piece right here goes in between the crash bar and this tab here. So just do whatever you do, do whatever you need to get that there. And then as you can see, we have quite a gap between the core support and the crash beam. These have to be close together. So that's gonna require a little bit of lifting from the bottom here to bring them up like that. So we're gonna pick it up with joining the four T30s, two on either side, and then we'll finalize with the uh, 16 millimeters and the T30s in the front. Now let's switch over to our 16 millimeter socket and we'll get our 16 millimeter bolts fed in all the way first. Down here you'll also notice there's a wire harness. This goes up, uh, you have your ambient air temperature sensor and you also have your corner lights. That just tucks into the side of the core here. Um, just kind of keeps the cables from rattling around. So snug those back in there if you haven't already. Now we'll line up this side. All right, and I'm just gonna snug them all up and then we're gonna torque all eight of these 16 mils down to 60 Newton meters. All right, with this core support nice and tight now, everything's gonna be great. You can go ahead and get rid of this cart or your floor jack. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap up by installing our impact sensors once more. Uh, connecting those back to their connectors and our hood latch release cable. I'm gonna sneak our ambient air temperature sensor back through this little flap up here, clip it back into the 
bracket coming off of the craft support and we can tuck it in. Beautiful. These will hang out. These are going to go to the markers. Now we can do our impact sensors. Over on the passenger side, we're behind the AC line. I'm going to line up our yellow connector. Make sure that your red locking tab is still out. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to clip this in all the way. Then we can lock the red tab up. Now it's the same thing on the driver's side. Same thing on the driver's side. I know the connector is a little bit hard to see. It is behind the radiator hose, the upper one, but the idea is going to remain the same. This one, the red tab is going to be facing the battery. Clip that up, lock in the red, and then your other sensor right here, right in front of the air box. And now we can redo our hood latch release cable. So let's do that next. I'm just going to join the ball ends together once more. Lock that bad boy over. Swing that sucker in there. Don't forget to put your cover back on. And then you have two tabs that clip into these two little tabs coming off of the support. Just go straight up. Beautiful. Now we have our crash support back on. Our impact sensors are back on. We have our hood release cable reattached. We can continue with reassembling the front end. Uh, we can go ahead and reinstall our headlight brackets and our headlights and then pick it up from there. So let's do that now. All right, my good people, now we're going to install our headlights. We're going to show you the passenger side. If you remember, I took these two brackets apart as they came out of the car. It's up to you if you want to join them together now and insert them as one piece or insert them as two. It doesn't really matter. Um, save yourself a little bit of work. You can do this job with keeping the headlights attached to the front core support and pulling everything out as one. However, that's a lot of weight. In my opinion, you're going to be balancing a lot of things while you're putting it back together. Uh, larger risk of hitting the fender or scratching anything. So take a two extra minutes, rip them all apart. No problem. If you remember this side clips into the core support right here, it's got a little tab and then we have three T25s on this side. That's it. Somewhere like that. There is a dowel that goes into the fender. That's going to look like that. Feed that over here and it basically self installs. We'll start with the three T25s on the end and we have the bottom bracket of our headlight assembly here, or the bracket that holds our assembly in. That had the two silver T30s and or 10 millimeter bolts that hold that in place. If you remember the longer black bolt, that's kind of your alignment bolt for this. We didn't change the setting on this, so we're just gonna feed it right back in as it is. If we need to go back and loosen them up and change things a bit, we can. Things can often change when you take them apart. Now we can take our headlight assembly and gently feed that back in. Being mindful that our connector is still in the back, ready to rock and roll. We have four T30s that hold this in as well, two up top. We'll just get those started by hand so it doesn't fall on us. And this is where you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to your markings if you made any, or just your headlight in general. Try to keep your gaps nicely. Um, this car already had front end work done to it before, so the gaps were not great. So we're gonna make them a little bit better, which is why we didn't mark anything down. That's gonna be good for up there. As you get your headlight in, my good people, make sure that you line up the bottom of the lens, have these two clear tabs, and they line up with two little tabs coming out of that bottom headlight bracket. Use a better shot of that front one. This one protrudes nicely. You can mess with the bracket a little bit to get that other one to sit in a little better. Uh, that one's been broken off. That's why it's not sticking out. And now we have four T30s that hold in our headlight, three up top. This is where you're gonna wanna pay attention to your markings if you made any, or just pay attention to the headlight as you tighten them down so you can align it properly. And then we have one more back there, which we'll get once we lower the car down a little bit. So let's do that now. And we have our fourth one down below, right in front of the air box. I'm gonna start that one now so we don't lose it. And four. And back here, don't forget to plug it in once more. Your connectors may be a little bit different depending on what kind of headlights your car's running, but they may all just use this. Beautiful. Now we have our headlight in. We're just gonna go ahead and zap through the passenger side, do the exact same thing, and then we'll pick it up in just a moment. Now, before we get too carried away, at this point we have our headlights back on, we have our front end back on. Uh, before we put our bumper cover back on, that one can kind of go on last as there's really nothing in the way of it. And that way if we need to move anything around, or perhaps you drained your coolant and then you're filling it back up. Kind of helps having as much uh, angles to look from uh, for things uh, when you're assembling new parts, especially with a big job like this. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is just snug up that T30 that holds the 
radiator to the intercooler on the bottom passenger corner, which we couldn't get to at the beginning. And then once that's snugged up, we're gonna pick this back up with installing the vacuum line portion of this DIY. We have a little bit of splicing to do and a couple new lines to run. So let's do that now. And then just a reminder, we're just feeding the T30 that holds the radiator to the intercooler side of things now. Uh, that's one that I couldn't get to before. It's a little bit of a tight fit uh, with the AC lines and everything in the way. So I wanna get this one in before we get too far ahead and forget. All right, my good people, we're gonna start by installing our vacuum lines now. That way we can route everything the way we want it before the fans go back in or the air um, elbow, air box elbow. Two of the lines already come kind of snugged up together. One is gonna go uh, to our, what they call the air box element of this install. We're gonna splice uh, on this line up here coming out of the air box. Our vacuum source is gonna come off of this T down here by our valve. That's gonna be the shorter line out of the two. There's three ports on the temperature sensor that Volkswagen labels as port number one, which goes to our air box. Port number two, or the middle one, which goes to our vacuum source. And port number three, which is gonna go down to the valve at the intercooler. That one's gonna route itself down there. Uh, I had to mess with these lines a little bit, just how they came out of the box. Um, line one, or port one, uh, they were kind of reversed. The longer vacuum line goes to the air box element or our vacuum source. So what I'm going to do first is I'll plug in one and two at the temperature switch here. And those are going to go right here. And maybe to make our life a little bit easier, we'll actually grab number three. This is the single vacuum line that goes to the air intercooler. We can sneak, sneak this one up here first. Since it's gonna be the number three port, it'll be a little bit tight to get to after. I'm gonna make sure the line is seated all the way in as much as possible. Sorry for blocking the view. I'm just making sure we can get this line in all the way. It's a tight fit. You don't need any clamps for this. They're not gonna blow off. Number three can just hang out there for now. We'll come back to revisiting how to organize it or route it properly in just a moment. For now, we can take Lines two and one, get those situated. Again, line two goes to our vacuum source. It's gonna be the shorter out of the two that are stuck together or paired together from the factory. And then line one is gonna go to our air box feed. And then line two is gonna get spliced uh, somewhere over here. It's gonna be your pick uh, where you wanna do that T. Might help to disconnect this sensor going to our rail if you need it, but for now, let's just make sure they both reach their respective spots. One is gonna go somewhere up here, probably hang it off of that, clip it off of there, and two can go right here. So let's grab something to cut with, and uh, we'll cut these lines and splice them in. So for line one, they recommend that you tee up here between this grommet and the bend. So we're just gonna pop this little plastic clip off for now, give us some room to work with. Now these are not the best tools, definitely get something better than scissors, but scissors will do the trick. Then we can clip these down in just a moment and route them how we want them. But for now, let's tee our vacuum source now. Now I'm just messing with the vacuum lines here. I originally swapped them from how they came out of the box, but I kind of see the method to their madness now. Um, the crossover is going to happen above the temperature switch, but it does help to have the shorter line vacuum line number two that goes to our vacuum source on the right hand side of things. So I had swapped them before thinking it'd be better. I was wrong, my good people, I'm not always right. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and tee into our vacuum source next, and then we can worry about routing them uh, with all the clips that they give you. Volkswagen recommends after the check valve and the U here that you kind of splice right into this big rubber elbow. So we're just gonna cut it nice and clean right there and feed in our T. Again, you don't need clamps for these. These are nice, snug, tight fits. Okie dokie, and then they give you some clips along the lines that you can kind of find and match them up wherever the cables are lying around or the hoses are lying and then just snag onto uh, anything in the nearby vicinity. So I'm gonna probably take this one over here, steal that vacuum line there. Maybe it wouldn't be the worst idea to take a little zip tie and attach your line here, unless you wanna mess with these a little bit, but then you're putting too much strain on these hoses here. Let's see if we can get a little slack at the top here. 
That's not great, my good people. Let me know in the comments how you are going to route your lines. Maybe we can come back and revise this. Um, the goal is just to keep it away from the CGR line there. That gets pretty hot, so we don't want them touching that. And we can always throw a couple zip ties in to just kind of secure everything better. But for now, let's mess with our third vacuum line. This is going to port three. This is going to feed down to our intercooler. We have a couple bigger clips to route this vacuum line. So let's go ahead and do that now. Just want to give you a quick glimpse. I kept revising the lines here, and this is the final routing that we did. We just kind of followed some of the major ones down this major clip here for the one that goes into our air box and just kind of ran it down. And same thing with the small one. We joined them here to our vacuum source and just kind of pinched them all together. Again, you can totally throw a zip tie or two in here to kind of sneak everything better. Um, I have these two lines running behind our th throttle position sensor, EGR valve, sorry, or the flap. Um, those are just tucked back there. So now we can work on sneaking this third line down properly, which we're going to do from underneath the car and uh, get that situated on our intercooler. And there's three clips that come with this bottom line that you can kind of use to grab onto the uh, harness. You can probably do these from up top, but it really doesn't matter where you put them as long as they clip on and keep the line out of the fans. And then we're gonna take our vacuum line, make sure it stays out of the way of the fans and route it over to our flap. And you can see the small port where the vacuum line is going to feed into. Just make sure that's snug in all the way. And that's going to stay out of our way for our fan's electrical connector. After the fact, that'll stay out of our way when we put the fan in. And while we're down here, we can also go ahead and route our coolant line back into the plastic tab that comes off of the intake pipe so that that's not dancing around on us and it's not in our way when our fans go back in. Just an alligator clip. Squeeze it together and it locks it back up. And with this situated down here, following the order of operations of how we took things out, we're going to pick it back up with reinstalling our fan. Then we'll do the lines to our intercooler piping and then we'll wrap up the bumper and all that good stuff. Now we're going to go ahead and feed our fan back in. We're going to feed it the same way we took it out, which was at a bit of an angle, uh, a 90 degree angle, if you will. So I'm going to feed it right back in the same way. Connector again on the driver's side of things. Being mindful to not mar up the fins on the radiator as best as possible. I'm just kind of letting gravity do its thing as it goes in. Let's grab our two top T30s and just get those situated in here so it holds the fan in place. All right, with these situated, let's hop down underneath and get the bottom two and plug in our electrical connector. We're gonna go ahead and feed the bottom one in. This one sits between the AC line and the radiator uh, coolant line. Same thing, we're just gonna snug them up using our quarter inch ratchet with our T30 bit. No need to go uh, ham on these. All right, let's do the driver's side and also plug in our electrical connector. Nice and snug. We can plug in our electrical connector. Red tab is still unlocked. Plug that sucker in, lock the tab in. Now let's grab our pipes so that we can reconnect our charge pipes to our intake pipes and down pipe, all that good stuff. And then we'll continue from there. All right, my good people, we're gonna install our driver's side uh, pipe first. Just gonna take this yellow protective cap that comes on our new intercooler. Make sure you have your tubes cleaned out, or your tubes, make sure your pipes are nice and cleaned out. You have your O-rings in there still. You have your clamp situated, ready to go. I'm just gonna feed it onto the intake side of things first. We have the clip already closed. Uh, should it just pop over the ridge here and lock in? That's exactly what we wanna feel in here. And we'll take our clamp, line it up, and cinch it down. Again, I'm using the seven millimeter CTA driver, but a flathead screwdriver will work perfectly. All right, now let's hop over to the passenger side and do the same thing. All right, at this point, our intercooler is hooked up. Our charge pipes and all that good stuff is situated. Now we can go ahead and just beautify everything back up. We'll go ahead and put our bumper cover on, and we'll put our plastics up top, our air box vent, and then we'll wrap it up with the shield and the wheels going back on. We go ahead and throw our bumper cover back on, starting with our foam bash bar. Then we'll feed our cover on. Make sure to rehook up 
your fog lights, your side markers, whatever your vehicle may be equipped with. Be mindful of your fenders also while you're feeding this on. You don't want to scratch them up if you have nice paint. And right now I'm just reaching underneath and just plugging the fog light back in and the side marker. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start with the T25s up front here. Get those situated. We're just snugging them in gently with the Milwaukee. We're not gonna crank them down. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our grill if we'd like. So let's go ahead and do that next. All right, and then we have four T25s up top. I'll bring it down a hair for you. Now let's hop into the fender wells or the wheel wells. So we can attach our fender liner to the bumper once more. We have five T25s in either wheel well that we're gonna sink back in. Now let's hop over to the passenger side and do the exact same thing. Now with this fender liner situated, we can throw our wheels back on and then we can go ahead and reinstall our splash shield underneath. We're just gonna throw our wheel back on, get the lug bolt started by hand. We'll snug them up to the hub. And then once the car is back on the ground for good, We'll torque them down properly. Line up your lug bolts. Always start the lug bolts by hand. The last thing you want to do is crisscross, or <laughs> crisscross. The last thing you want to do is strip your hardware right after finishing up a huge DIY and not be able to go out for a test drive. I'm just going to snug them up with the Milwaukee again, just so that the wheel is flush to the hub. When it's on the ground, we'll finalize the torque. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Then I'll meet you back up on the underside where we we'll reinstall the rest of our T25s and our splash shield. I'm gonna go ahead and throw our shield back on, my good people. Make sure the tabs up front tuck underneath where they're supposed to. Let's take a quick look before we throw any hardware in. Did we miss any teeth? I don't believe so. So we'll start with the three T30s in the back, and then we can switch over to our T25 bit to wrap everything else up. <laughs> All right, with that, my good people, we can go ahead and head back on top. With the car back on the ground, we're gonna to torque all five lug bolts to 120 Newton meters. If you still have them, put your beauty covers back on, and then we'll pick it back up under the engine bay. We're gonna install this fine piece of German ducting back up on the radiator support. It's held in by two T25s. I'm gonna situate that like so. We can put our elbow back on while we're here. Right now we went to go put the beauty cover back on and I'm not really happy with how I situated these vacuum lines uh, over this coolant line here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just redo it really quick. Uh, you know, this is why we do these things. We make the errors so you don't have to at home. So what I'm gonna do is route underneath this hard coolant line right here. And then if you went ahead and follow along, make sure you plug your negative terminal back in. This is a 10 millimeter nut holding that on. It's just a pinch nut. All right, nice and snug. And then last but not least, my good people, we can reinstall our insulator cover, beauty cover, call it what you will. Go ahead and flip this bad boy over. Make sure we're not gonna pinch any of our new lines. And that is going to conclude this DIY for today. Overall, a straightforward job. Um, not so much a complicated job, but it is time consuming as you are removing the, basically the whole front clip here. Again, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Today we did it without opening the AC system or the cooling system as those can be a little bit tedious. You have to take the car to a shop to get the AC drained if you're going to remove the compressor. And then you have to refill the cooling system, which not a big deal, but if you can avoid it, let's avoid it if you like this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave those in the comments section below. And if you like this DIY and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing and make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.